it's finally time to share with you guys one of the products I am most excited about during this entire refit. Today, we're installing our new 12 volt Mabru air cons. We're at a very exciting step today. I'm gonna be removing the old cruiser unit down from under our owner's berth and making way for the new Mabru one. So let's take a look down here and kind of see what currently exists and what we've got to work with. So this is the old cruise air unit. This one is actually, uh, if you can kind of see the rating there, it's only 8K BTU. So the new Mabru one's seven. So we won't actually be losing a whole lot under here, um, which is good. Now this white box here, that is the pump control relay for the raw water pump. This box is the actual controller for uh, the cruise air unit. So all this stuff has to come out. We've got a very short little run from uh, the actual like unit itself to the box. And I'm gonna have to see how we're gonna work that. That might be a little bit tight in there, especially because the Mabru unit has a slightly different orientation to this cruise air. So, might have to get a little creative, but uh, we'll be able to reuse the raw water out and then the in down there. Um, we've got a drain. It's very hard to see. Yeah, trust me, it's down there at the bottom. And uh, we'll be getting rid of all kind of these electrical wires. We're gonna have to be redoing the thermostat, the uh, display control, all that stuff. So it's not a, a complete and exact direct swap, but it should be pretty close. So. Let's get started ripping things out. The old aircon out. Now I need to get some of the old wiring and stuff out. I have identified exactly which ones they are, so let's jump down. I'll show you what we're looking at here. There are four black cables. Uh, these two um, ran power from our AC circuit breaker box up into this compartment. Uh, these two provided power to the pumps for the two air conditionings on this side. So. Uh, this one is running to the bilge compartment where I'm going to be installing the new 12 volt pump for this Mabru. So I will do my level best to run new wiring um, down through that same little conduit. This one we don't need anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that whole thing. These two, they run kind of in, in this conduit, and then that's, uh, that's outside in the cockpit right there. So I'm going to reuse this for the big 12 volt wiring that's going to be running in here. So we'll pull that through this way. Now this is the old um, control cable for the display on my old air conditioning unit. And that's going to provide a little bit of a challenge and I'll show you why. Right here, that's where the old air conditioning control panel is located. And it's a pretty big hole in the wood. So I'd very much like to install the new one in the same place. This is the old wire for controlling the old controller. So this one runs down. I don't even know how to describe what's back there. There's like a wall separator. There's a bunch of wires. It's like literally my least favorite spot trying to run wires on the boat. And it all comes down here into this bilge, way down the bottom. You can kind of see in the corner, there is a conduit kind of running up. So somehow we got to get from under the bed where there's no real access down into here and then up to there. Well, I just discovered that the hole coming up from the bilge into this area is too small to let the new Mabru control cat five cable, which the attachment is slightly bigger. Holes too small. So, now I have to figure out somehow to get the new cable from here down there in a blind area. This this is where projects get so annoying because it's like, oh, be so easy, just 
pull the new one through. But no. I have gotten the new cable run up into the spot for the display. Uh, there's a reason I didn't film it. It took a while, and there may have been a few curse words in there, but it's done. Unfortunately, I have discovered another issue. The control display for the new Mabru units do not fit in the exact same profile as the controllers for the old Cruiser units. The Mabru units are a little bit deeper, and they seem to have, a, like, I don't know, an additional edge to them. Now ordinarily this wouldn't be too much of a problem. I could just kind of grind out a little bit on one edge and let it fit. Unfortunately, with where Fountain Peugeot installed the old or cruiser uh, control unit, th there's, there's some additional wall wood right in the way. So I have a lot of grinding to do. I got started with the easiest part first using my multi-tool to enlarge the hole. At that point, I could at least partially fit the controller into the space, which was progress in the right direction. There was no easy angle to get at the wood blocking the controller from sitting flush, so I just kind of hacked at it, piece by piece, any way I could, until I was really close. Then I used a Dremel to finish it off. Doesn't have to be pretty. Just functional, and the control panel fits, so that's all I care about. After that tricky and unforeseen challenge, it felt especially victorious to put in the final screw and officially mount the controller. Plus, that meant I could move on to the oh-so-fun and comfortable task of removing old wiring and running new wires. The compartment is pretty much ready to go. All the wires are in, everything's nice and cleaned up. Now we're gonna do the dry fitting. I'm a big fan of this stage, just to try to figure out exactly where all the components are gonna be. Uh, trying to figure out like where is the control box gonna be mounted. I've got some power posts that we're gonna be using for bringing the wires in from uh, the circuit breakers and all that stuff, so I wanna figure out where those are gonna be mounted. Having this in to do a test fitting, I can already tell uh, a few complications that we'll have to deal with. Nothing that's insurmountable, but uh, let's take a quick look here. First thing is, in order to have the blower exiting out where the ducting currently is, uh, we need to have that on that side. Um, a little tough to see, but all the way at the bottom down there, that's the drain, which is good because I want the drain going that way. However, what that means uh, that's the connection for the the flow out and uh, that's that's the hose for the outflow there's a bit of a gap so we'll have to have to bridge that now for the the control box here my intention is to mount it kind of over on this panel and what I'm hoping we're going to be able to do is kind of mount it up yeah kind of like that and it should Get the wires kind of up and out of the way, and then I can mount the power posts down here. So we'll uh, kind of work those in, mount the cables, get all that stuff ready. Because once once this is all in here for real, it's going to be very difficult to kind of drill and mount all that stuff. One other thing that's worth mentioning is the difference in the drainage from the Mabru units from our old Cruiser. So down here at the base, we've got one drain and two drains. Our cruise air only had one, so having to come up with a little bit of a well, plumbing creation setup sort of thing. So what I have got, let's let's show you. Um, first of all, I want to note that it's like a stainless steel chassis down there, so I don't really want to be putting in dissimilar metals. So we've got kind of plastic. Uh, NPT and then barbed. So I think it's half inch this side, five eighths inch for the barb. So we'll put one there, one over there, and then because it won't be touching the stainless, 
Now I can use kind of a Y adapter, hose, hose, and then this end will come out to the drain that goes down to our shower sump box. Fitting both of the drains is perhaps a bit of overkill. I've seen several official Mabru installations that block one of the drains, so I'm sure that would have been fine. But since I'm not 100% positive how Starry Horizons will sit in the water after all the work we're doing, having multiple drainage options seems like a good idea. Pretty sure we're ready for the next step. The, the whole air conditioning unit, I've got the drain set up all done. The wires have been all crimped and every new lugs put on. So moment of truth, let's get this thing installed. As seems to happen on boat projects, got distracted by other boat projects for a little bit, but we are back down here in the owner's cabin. We've got aircon down there. And today we're gonna to be doing all the final hookups here for this aircon. So I cannot remember where I've left things, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but I need to bolt down the actual uh, base of the aircon. We need to hook up the hoses and then actually kind of like tape and connect the actual ducting assembly. So let's, uh, let's get that all done. These are the brackets for holding down the base and in a, a slight annoyance with Mabru, these don't actually fit all the way down the length of the base. So, and they don't come with any spacers or anything like that. So I found kind of like these quarter inch rubber spacers and I'm gonna stack them up and we'll be able to use this, provide a little extra uh, like vibration assistance and then also space the brackets down to where we're mounting them. I love it when an idea I have turns out to be a good one. The rubber spacers worked perfectly and I got all four brackets properly installed. That base is really solidly in there and that aircon's not going anywhere which means I can move on to focusing on the duct. So I've got a couple things for this. We've got some really, really, really big zip ties. Super, super big. So we're gonna use that kind of on the, the inner vinyl, I think it's, it's called. Uh, Trying to get that nice and cinched down onto the actual um, uh, ducting from the aircon itself. And then I've got some official HVAC tape that we will wrap around uh, the duct, it's the duct and the ducting. Um, so we can actually get the nice good seal in there. Not gonna lose any cold air that I want down in the tropics. Somehow I doubt I'm gonna be hired on for any big HVAC projects anytime soon, but that should get the job done for us, which leaves one step remaining, connecting up the seawater intake and then discharge hoses. I have to get a little creative for that. We can see down here where the hoses ended for the old cruiser units. And, and there's there's nothing to it, uh, attach them to here because the Mabru is, is oriented a little different way. Coils come out here. So we'll have to extend this around. And I've got some extra hose. So we'll go ahead, splice that in. I, I thought long and hard about trying to pull just brand new hose all the way through. That's really embedded in the boat. I'm 95% sure FP put those in before they put the top of the hole on. So we're gonna try just extending for now, and if it doesn't work, if this thing doesn't cool well enough, well, try again. I think we're all done, up here at least. Still have to go down and do the pump and that assembly, but all the, the plumbing, the electrical, 
everything's all connected up here. I, I definitely learned a lesson. Put on the intake hose before you do the ducting. So very challenging getting down to that, but uh, we've got a little bit of cable management done in there. I think it looks pretty nice and clean. I'm very pleased. I just, I cannot wait to get back in the water and see how this thing is going to do. The last step of this Mabru install is going to be getting the pump in place. Now, I have run all the electrical wires down there, so that's already in waiting for us. This is one of the things we're going to be using for our new through holes, so had to get that project all done before we could tackle this. And I have laid out all the components. I've got an idea for how we're going to do this, so let me show you. We're going to start coming from hose, from strainer, nope, this will be the through hole, up into the strainer, and then because changing the strainer releases some water, I want a, a ball valve that we can use to block any water running that way. Now, this is the brew pump. I'm amazed about how small that is compared to our last one. The intakes there, and then the outtake there, those are half inch threads. The through holes, one inch. The strainer, three quarters. Ball valve, three quarters. Uh, so I need to do a little bit of adapting down to the actual pump, but I want the, the strainer and the ball valve to be bigger than what's coming in here because I know some additional connections reduce water flow just a little bit. So as much getting through there as possible is good. And then we've got an elbow adapter to the 5 8 inch hose that will go up to the unit itself. So lots of adapting, mixing, all that fun stuff. And then up here, we've got some starboard because I'm gonna make like a little mounting plate that we can mount the pump on. Everything has come together quite nicely, I have to say. Pretty pleased. All, all put together. And then I do have the starboard all cut out, holes drilled. And then I've got um, some of the just rubber spacers that we'll use for some vibration dampening. So very pleased that it's all come together. Let's get it down and mounted. All of the plumbing connections have been made. It did require a little bit of a rethink in the middle as I was mounting everything and trying to connect to the hose from the seacock into the strainer. I, I just, there was too much strain on the pump itself trying to hold everything up. And I don't want that, certainly do not want the pump to be breaking. So took everything apart, added a bracket on the strainer so that now has a lot of good support in there. Everything can easily freely turn, so that is nice. And I have added or re reinstalled, let's use that word, uh, the airlock valve that we had on our old cruiser systems that I'd um, installed. So we use that all the time, super helpful. Uh, definitely wanted to make sure that was in the system as well. Now the last thing, we gotta get wires and hooked up and power to this pump, and that's literally the last step. It's nice when I save the part I'm most confident in for last. I mounted the 5 amp fuse that comes with the pump, mounted the wire control box, crimped in all the connectors for the positive and negative wires, tried not to burn my fingers as I melted the heat shrink, and finished up with some cable management to tuck things away. So is that the end? I really hope so. Nah. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty confident. Like these projects, they always take me much longer than I think they will. 
but I'm generally pretty pleased when they're finished. So it looks really clean. The new uh, through hole, the seacock hole assembly, I'm really proud of how that turned out. Mm -hmm. And then coming up to the strainer, mounting the bracket was definitely the right idea. Having the ball valve to limit the water loss when we open the strainer. Really like that. Pump is mounted well. We've got the bleed valve. Everything's wired in. It looks pretty nice and clean. So I'm very pleased. Now I just, we really need to get on the water so we can actually try using these things. <laughs> and uh, I think that's gonna make a big difference. I think so too. Kind of a game changer. All right. Only two more to go. Yeah, don't remind me of that. No. But we'll get those finished and then on to more projects like water makers.